Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to do lecture number 14 of your unit 1 according to your syllabus. So uh, you have to remember the last class that we did uh, about uh, canonical distribution. So now we are going to see some simple applications of canonical dis distribution. So today's example is uh, paramagnetism. So before uh, uh, going into the theory, we have to just uh, describe a bit about uh, magnetism. So you have heard, you know this equation from uh, your uh, previous uh, classes, maybe in BSc, that uh, B is equal to mu zero into H plus M. So what is the difference of all these terms? So you have to know that. So B is the uh, field that is experienced by the material and mu zero is a magnetic moment and h is the applied field and m is a magnetization so this m can be written as uh, chi m into h and this is the applied field h and this is the um, magnetic susceptibility this chi m and depending on this chi m there are paramagnetic materials uh, ferromagnetic materials and diamagnetic materials so in the case where chi m is small and positive uh, then that means it's a paramagnet okay so uh, now today what we are going to do is uh, we we know that uh, chi m is a microscopic quantity and we need quantum mechanics to describe that but how these small microscopic uh, quantities uh, will come together and then Mm, we have to find out what is the mean magnetic moment mean magnetic moment mu h and then how it will uh, contribute to finding uh, chi m so that is what we are going to describe and how we can use a canonical distribution uh, to find the value of uh, this chi m that is what we are going to do today so uh, now first we will consider a substance okay and then total number of uh, magnetic atoms per unit volume is n0 we are uh, writing the total number of magnetic um, atoms per unit volume is n0 and it is placed in an external magnetic field and we also think that each atom so i have drawn small small dots here consider that to be atoms and uh, it has a half spin okay and uh, half spin corresponding to any unpaired electron that is present so majority of uh, will be pointing in one direction and some will be pointing in a different direction so uh, depending on that uh, what we have to say is we have to describe um, how uh, the chi m uh, we can derive like that so <laughs> if the substance is at absolute temperature okay if a substance is at absolute temperature uh, what is the mean magnetic moment mu h in the direction of h so it can be uh, it can be parallel so this magnetic moments can point in parallel direction or anti parallel direction so at absolute temperature t what is the mean magnetic moment mu h uh, the mu bar h in the direction of h for such an atom so uh, some assumptions we have to make what is that it interacts weakly uh, with other atoms and is not affected uh, by the other degrees of freedom of the substance means other than magnetic field applied magnetic field we are not taking into consideration anything else then uh, now we can focus our attention on a single atom as a small system and uh, regard all other atoms as uh, constituting a heat reservoir so this is where our um, with, what is a concept of uh, canonical distribution comes into focus so we are considering only one atom and uh, that is one atom will be our small system so if you come here you have your one atom as a small system and uh, the rest of it is our heat reservoir and this whole thing consists of your uh, uh, canonical system so as we described in the last class okay so we are using this uh, concept we are going to describe okay so now we have each atom can have uh, two possible states that is spin up uh, that is parallel to h or the negative where the spin is pointing down that is anti parallel to h so in the positive state the atomic magnetic moment mu is parallel uh, just as we told here and then magnetic moment uh, is written as mu and the uh, another important thing is the corresponding magnetic energy of the system is given by e plus is equal to minus mu h 
okay this means um, point plus means nothing but pointing in the direction parallel to the direction of h that is applied magnetic field that is uh, this it is denoted by plus and the magnetic energy in this case is given by minus mu of h and uh, the now in the canonical distribution this is where we are using the formula from the canonical distribution so we also we found in the last class that the probability of finding an atom in any state state is given by uh, p is proportional probability is proportional to the boltzmann factor this is your boltzmann factor so uh, and i am removing the proportionality cons uh, proportionality sign and then replacing it with a constant constant of proportionality so beta you already know that it is kt in uh, inverse now <coughs> if mu is positive then it is the state of lower energy means all of it are pointing in in direction parallel to h that means this is a state of lowest energy so it's the most probable and the atom is most likely to be found in this state in the negative state uh, our mu is anti parallel to h so that mu of h is equal to minus mu and the energy will be more e is equal to plus mu h so therefore the because the energy is more probability of finding the atom in this state is less so uh, it is uh, p is equal to c e raised to minus beta into energy and uh, this is given by c um, c into e raised to minus beta uh, minus beta into mu h okay so <coughs> this is the state of high ener higher energy if mu is positive and in this uh, state a state in which is less likely to be found because it is a higher energy now hmm, ah, now we are taking the first case where it is parallel to h because it is more probable then the mean magnetic moment mu h must point in the direction of the external magnetic field h now this beta into mu h we are going to write it as y so beta is equal to mu of h uh, divided by this is mu into h okay this is a magnetic field mu into h divided by kt so this is a magnetic energy divided by the thermal energy we already told no energy is given by magnetic moment into the applied field so this is magnetic moment into applied field divided by kt magnetic energy by thermal energy now the if y is is less than 1 very much less than 1 or that means what t must be very high then the probability that uh, it's parallel to h is almost as the same as it being anti parallel meaning what at low temperatures it is low it is more likely to orient along the magnetic field but if temperature is very high it can be up and down okay so the probability that many things are up are equal to the probability that many thing many spins are down so what will happen so mu uh, the average magnetic moment will almost be approximately equal to zero because um, some are pointing up some are pointing down since the probabilities are equal then uh, the average will be zero but in the case if y is greater than 1 or t is small then mu has a probability to be parallel to h so at lower temperatures the system will have lower energy if the system has to have lower energy then the magnetic moments should parallel should be pointing parallel to h so that is the meaning of this then uh, this what we said that time we can write it uh, in terms of our probabilities the mean magnetic moment is written in terms of probabilities so uh, probability that is in the uh, plus uh, state or parallel and uh, into mu plus uh, the probability that is in the minus into minus of mu divided by the sum of the probabilities that will give you the um, average of the magnetic moments so so i am substituting the value of p uh, both p's i am substituting so when you substitute the value of p so you get this form of an equation so when you get this form of an equation this is equal to what this is the definition of a hyperbolic tangent e raised to y minus e raised to minus y e raised to y plus e raised to minus y this is the definition of a hyperbolic tangent so i can write it accordingly so mu h is equal to um, uh, tan of h mu h by kt
so this i am writing instead of this i am writing as uh, tan h mu h by kt so uh, magnetization m not or mean magnetic moment per unit volume so uh, we already saw here if you remember in the beginning we saw this this equation okay we are coming to this so um, this m0 is given by uh, number of uh, magnetic atoms per unit volume multiplied by the mean magnetic moment okay so if y less than uh, very much less than 1 then we can write e raised to y uh, if you expand the series 1 plus y by 1 factorial plus y square by 2 factorial so the higher terms you can ignore why because it is y is very much less than 1 so just taking these two these two values and then if you substitute it here so what will you get you will get it is equal to y because 1 and 1 will cancel uh, y to y by 2 it will be y so uh, you will get for y very much less than less than 1 tan h y will be equal to y on the other hand if y is much greater than 1 then again you substitute here then these two terms will e raised to minus y will be very less why because uh, y will be if y is a very great number then minus of that will be very less so only e raised to y by e raised to y so that will be equal to 1 so we have the two conditions when y is greater than much greater than 1 and y is far far less than 1 so now uh, why what is our y y means mu into h by kt so when it is far far less than 1 then what is the value of magnetic average magnetic moment so we already know that um, this is the this is the equation for that mu h is equal to mu h bar is equal to this is the magnetic moment tan h of mu into h by kt so this one this is our y so y is uh, in the first case that is when it is far far less than 1 we got it as that is equal to tan h y is equal to y so y again i am substituting so mu into uh, mu h by kt or mu h bar is equal to mu square h by kt so i hope you can understand this this is nothing but uh, you know already mu h bar is equal to mu h into tan h mu into h by kt so the mu mm, sorry uh, this is the mean magnetic moment okay so or this this is you can write it as just mu this is the mean magnetic moment for the applied field h and this is not a subscript this is a subscript this is not a subscript this is means the magnetic field so uh, we found that at y is far far less than 1 tan h of y this is y right mm. this is y is equal to y so mu into y what is y mu into <coughs> mu h by kt so you have mu square h by kt okay and then next case is mu h by kt is far far greater than 1 so that time we found that tan h uh, of y is equal to 1 so similarly substitute you will get mu h is equal to mu so then uh, we already told that magnetization m naught is equal to n0 into uh, mu h bar so uh, when mu h by kt far far less than 1 then uh, we what did we write we wrote as uh, it is equal to m0 we can write as this one substitute for uh, this one so that is what m0 is equal to mu square h by kt into um, what n0 so according to this equation so this whole thing instead of in other than h this whole thing i am taking and putting it as chi this is your magnetic susceptibility so uh, magnetic susceptibility i can uh, define as mu square n0 by kt okay so this is your chi and this chi is defined like this so the fact that chi is inversely proportional magnetic susceptibility is inversely proportional to temperature is known as your curie's law okay 
so this whatever we got we can put it in as a graph here so uh, we know that uh, and, and what mm, uh, when mu h by kt is far far greater than 1 then m0 is equal to n0 into mu it becomes independent of h okay it becomes because there is no uh, what to say h h factor here okay so uh, why we already found that it is mu h is equal to mu so there is no y so therefore there is no magnetic applied magnetic field so then what it will become it will become a maximum and it will be saturated so when it is less than one it is dependent m0 is dependent on h but once it is uh, mu h by kt is far far uh, far far greater than one then the magnetization is uh, what to say is independent and becomes saturated so this is uh, paramagnetism as an example of uh, canonical distribution okay thank you